Hey everyone, Heartless here bringing you guys another StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void daily match. Today it is going to be a Protoss vs Zerg on Dusk Towers. So spawning in the bottom right, in the bottom left hand corner playing for Psystorm Gaming as our Red Zerg, it is end of line. And spawning in the top right hand corner playing as our Blue Protoss, playing for Flipside Tactics, it is M Canning. Protoss vs Zerg. This is a fun one. There's a lot of really fun builds that you can see. A lot of crazy cool engagements happening. Lots of lurker play. Uh, lots of Archons. Really good fun matchup. So I'm looking forward to this one. Well, I guess Archons depending on which player is playing. Because sometimes you actually have a Sky Toss. But that's besides the point. Anyway, end of line. Looks like he's going to be going for Hatch first. Yes. So Hatch is going to go down. Now, that's in the third spot, so we may see a 3 hatch before pool, but more likely than not, we're going to see gas and then pool, or probably pool than gas. Not sure which way it's going to happen, but we'll find out here in just a minute. Yep, it's going to be gas and pool. And as for M. Kenny, it looks like it was going. it is a Nexus first build, and then into gateway. This is something we see quite often is a Nexus first, into double gateway, which... I wouldn't be surprised to see a second one come down here from M. Canning. He does that quite often. With double assimilators coming down too, we should... If he is going to go double gate, we'll, we'll find out here in just a minute. And let's see here. So, as for end of line... Yeah, so it was gas pool. We'll probably... He'll probably pull the drones off here in a little bit once he gets 100. And yeah, there's the other gateway. So, M. Canning going for the standard... Well... Yeah, these are pretty much standard openings. Hatch, gas, pool, and then Nexus first into double gateway, and then into your into your cybernetics core. And one of the transitions out of this that we're seeing quite often from the Protoss side of things is Stargate. So I wouldn't be surprised to see M. Canning go for a Stargate, possibly get an Oracle, maybe. Most Zergs nowadays expect some form of air shenanigans in these in these matches so there I think end of line would probably have a sport caller in the bases by this time an Oracle would actually get there so yeah if it is gonna be Stargate we're probably gonna see Phoenix sometimes you do see Oracle and sometimes it really really works out but if we are gonna see a Stargate we're gonna probably see Phoenix and so the Nexus is up and running and Yes, it is a Stargate. A Stargate for M. Kenning. So I'm hoping he gets some Phoenixes out of here. If he possibly could get an Oracle out on time. I'm not sure if he would or not. Uh, let's see. Evo Chamber going down as well for end of line. Along with speed about to finish up. Ooh, and here's an interesting thing from M. Canning. Is the fact that he's getting a Stalker. So sometimes you'll see double Stalker production. Sometimes you'll see double Adept production out of these double gateways. And electing to go for a Zealot first, and then it is going to be Stalker, along with Adept afterwards. So, one Stalker, one Adept. Interesting decision. I like it. I actually really like this. This is this is a really good play from M. Canning. Getting a quick Stalker out, be able to shut down any Overlords that might come into his base. Might be indicative that there's going to be a timing attack coming. I don't know if it would be a full-on timing attack. Ooh. The Overlord drop in with a bunch of Zerglings, but M. Canning sees it, and the Overlord, ooh, the, okay, this, the Phoenix is going to pop out in time, and they should be able to get the Overlord before all of the Lings are able to drop out of it. How many are able to get out? Okay, six Lings are able to get out. They're going to be able to clean up the Stalker. Oh, man. That was... Not the kind of drop that you want if you're going to actually dedicate to it. That was a combined total of 300 minerals lost for the price of a Stalker. Not horrible, considering a Stalker is worth 125 and 50. So not the most horrible trade out, but it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. End of line was hoping that that would have been a little bit more of a fruitful attack. And he's wondering what his drones are doing over here. <laughs> Free drone kills for M Canning. Dark Archon. <laughs> oh, M. Kenning showing still that he has a sense of humor. Gotta love these guys. They're really good what they do. 
And robotics facility coming down for him canning. So, immortals, most likely. Couple observers, probably. Ooh, I like this too. Twilight Council and a forge. So, yeah, I do believe this is going to be a little bit more indicative of the timing that's probably going to hit. Um, well, de he might actually delay it depending on the Phoenix harass that he's able to get done with these three Phoenix. But if I were to judge anything, I'd probably say about an eight, nine minute timing attack. All right. I'm Kenny going to go ahead and start coming on here, see what kind of scouting information he can get. Also seeing any kills that he can possibly get as well. The spore callers are up, so he shouldn't be able to get too much done to the mineral lines. But he is going to be able to pick up the drones that were on one gas. And that's kind of annoying to have to deal with, honestly. Whenever your workers on gas get attacked and then you have to spend the more workers to get to replace them. It's just really, really annoying. Now, end of line having seen the phoenix did bleh, sorry decided to go for hydralisks and so now i'm think i'm wondering what kind of answer m kenning is going to have to this because whenever you force your opponent to go hydralisks you do need to end up having some form of splash damage because without splash damage hydralisks can wreck your army pretty hard and so I'm curious as to see if he is going to, number one, going to get any splash damage. But if he does, what kind? Is it going to be Storm? Is it going to be Disruptors? Heck, it could even be Colossus going back in, in time here. Because we have, we have seen that. So just considering how many gateways he's going, I wouldn't be surprised to see Templar with Storm. We'll find out here in a little bit. As for end of line, now going with a lurker den. So, this is, I, a lot of this is going to come down to what kind of splash damage Jim Kenning goes for, if he goes for it at all. He is getting a Templar Archive, so a good trigger of seeing whether or not he's going to be able to deal with this is whether or not he actually gets Storm. Storm is so important. Ooh, and a Banely Nest also coming down for end of line. End of line also gearing up for possibly a, ooh. Got to keep those overlords alive. Possibly, because he has a lot of lings. Some type of lurker hydralisk baneling attack. If he's going to do that, he's going to need all the gas, though. And so I would be expecting gases 5 and 6 to go down here in a minute as well. Uh, but getting a good amount of scouting done, does he see the lurkers? Does he see the lurker den coming in? I don't think he does. No, he does not know about it. So we'll see what he decides to what he decides to do when he finds out about those lurkers. And storm is on the way. So this is going to be a really nice way of dealing with all those hydralisks because when you have a lurker hydralisk and roach push with some lings, possibly banelings, however, it's fully composed, the whole backbone of the attack is the lurkers. And also the Hydralisks being able to do the damage along with it. But the full-on backbone is the Lurkers staying together with the Hydralisks. So if you are able to zone out the two away from each other, then you can take much more favorable, favorable engagements and not lose as easily. And he does see the Lurker Den. At least he should have. Let's make sure. Yeah, he saw the Lurker Den. So he knows this is coming now. So... What does he have to answer with this? Well, thankfully, he has Storm. And he has, I think, five Templar? Let's take a look. Six. Six Templar, fully loaded. That's going to be a lot of Storms. That's going to be a lot of damage he's going to be able to, to do. And I think he was expecting uh, end of line to come around this side, but he did not. And so here we go. The engagement is, well, possibly going to happen. Okay, yeah, here it comes. The Lings are going to start jumping on, coming down in on these, uh, these Photon Cannons. One storm, two storms go down, three storms. So many banelings die! Oh my goodness! Half of this half of the damage from the banelings is uh, most of all the damage from the banelings is gone. Those storms were incredible. Oh my goodness, I cannot begin to describe how good Storm is against this kind of ar this army composition. Now, he is gonna lose this warp gate, but losing one warp gate for how much damage he did, uh, that's alright. 
He's being able to, and this is another thing that he's able to do. These lurkers are actually a little bit out of position away from these hydralisks. So if he's able to see, keep them uh, zoned out and get the storms down in on them, he's going to be able to take out the backbone of this army, taking out the lurkers and keeping them away from the hydras. And so while these lurkers are dying, yes, he sacrificed an archon or two, but now all almost all the lurkers are gone. There's one left and all the hydras are out of position. Another really good storm goes down, uh, severely weakening this army, and what what a hold by M. Canning. What a hold. That was awesome. Okay. And now for these zealots. Coming in over here. Going to try and possibly see if they can find the fifth base now for end of line. Uh, depending whether... Yeah, these these uh, lings should be able to push them away. Along with these extra hydralisks that are going to be behind it. So the zealots might get a couple kills. But they're, prob they're really not going to get any uh, economy or production damage done here. And now behind, whoop, sorry about that. And now behind all of this, Am Cannon getting plus three weapons. Plus three weapons is going to be awesome. It is going to do so much damage, but seven lurkers in production for end of line. Oh man, I, I feel like he's a little bit more behind now. And technically he is. He is behind about six workers and about 10 army supplies. So he's behind, but not by horrible amount. If he takes a favorable engagement, this could actually end up working in his favor. But during that attack, he lost so much gas and resources for those units. And now M. Canning is ready to go across the map. He knows about this fifth base. And let's take a look at what he's going to be able to do. Possibly uh, pinging the map for the fourth base. So maybe going to be going and attacking the fourth. I'm not sure. He's got another warpin of zealots as well. It looks like he's going to come in with the main force of his army into the fifth base of end of line, and his front line is going to start diving in on top of the <clears throat> on top of the lurkers. The storms go down. Fantastic storms, getting so much damage on these hydras. Another huge storm by M. Canning. Oh my goodness! And now the zealots here at the fourth base, and the phoenix with another flyby, uh, and. I don't know if End of Line is going to be able to hold this. This has been a fantastic attack. He is getting a Spire, but I, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Right now, the only thing that does attack up right now besides the Phoenix that he has are the Archons. Everything else is purely ground, but it just wasn't enough, and he wasn't going to be able to get it out in time. And there it is. Well played by End of Line. Great game by M. Canning. That hold at the fourth base was amazing. Those storms were awesome. Awesome. That was a great hold. And then a great counterattack a few minutes afterwards. I think his timing was a little bit delayed because of that attack, but he held it and he pushed and he ended up winning. So great job by M. Canning. Very valiant attempt by end of line as well. That was a really good match. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please remember to hit that subscribe button down below. Please remember to tell your friends about me. Please spread the word because we could all... We all love some extra StarCraft, don't we? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please remember to go check out, uh, go check me out on Facebook, Twitch, and on Twitter. Also, please remember to go check out EnochProductions.com and lastly, LOTV.SpawningTool.com. And I, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.